Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over DKA versus HHNS. These are two complications of diabetes mellitus and what I want to do for you is simplify those subtle um, signs and symptoms and those differences so you can get them right on your exam. Now this video is part of a endocrine series and in the previous video I covered in depth DKA where I covered the patho, the nursing interventions, the pharmacological aspects, and in the other video I covered HHNS in the same way. So if you want to access those videos, you can access the card above and it'll take you to a playlist and you can get to those videos. Now after this video, be sure to go to my website, registerednursern.com and take the free quiz that's going to quiz you on the differences between DKA and HHNS. So let's get started. Behind me I have this table and in the table I have put the differences between the two so you can easily see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through DKA and then we'll go through HHNS and compare the two. Okay, diabetic ketoacidosis and HHNS. HHNS stands for hyperglycemic hyperosmolar non-ketotic syndrome. Let the names help you because they explain a lot of the differences between these two issues. Okay, DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. This is mainly seen in your type 1 diabetics. It can be seen in type 2, but it's type 1, so remember that. HHNS is mainly seen in type 2 diabetics. Ketones and acidosis is present in this. This is because you have the breakdowns of fat because this patient has absolutely no insulin in the body, so the body needs fuel so it breaks down those fats, hence ketoacidosis. However, HHNS, there is absolutely no breakdown of ketones or acidosis, so you're not going to see any ketones in the urine and the patient's not going to have metabolic acidosis because there is just enough insulin in the body to prevent the body from breaking it down and um, breaking down fats. And um, usually these cells are just not receptive to insulin, but there is some insulin. That's why most of your type 2 diabetics, this is seen in. In DKA, you have hyperglycemia. You're going to have hyperglycemia in both of them, but with DKA, it's just going to be greater than 300 milligrams per deciliter. It's going to be elevated, but with HHNS, you are going to have heavy duty hyperglycemia. Remember the little mnemonic, the two H's in HHNS, HH, heavy duty hyperglycemia. These sugars are going to run greater than 600. You can see them not even registering on a monitor. You may have to, have to get an IV draw or um, they will be four digit. These glucoses are super high in these patients. Um, there in DKA, the osmolar osmolarity is variable. It's not much as an, of an issue as it is in HHNS. You're going to have really high osmolarity. And this is due to because the blood is super concentrated with those crazy glucose levels. So you're going to see a lot more problems due to the osmolarity in this condition, like dehydration, than you will see in DKA. DKA happens suddenly, fast, it comes on. HHNS, it's going to happen gradually over time. DKA, the causes, you have no insulin present, so that's one cause. Um, maybe they haven't been taking their insulin injections at all. Um, illness, infection, they needed more insulin because they're not taking it as much because their body's stressed out, but they needed more, but they didn't know that. They've been skipping meals, again, because they don't feel good, or they are they don't know that they're diabetic. This is usually one of the first signs in newly diagnosed diabetics is DKA. Causes of this, the cells, again, are just not receptive to insulin. There's just not enough present, but there's just enough present to prevent ketosis. The main cause of HHNS is usually because that diabetic patient has a severe infection or illness. This is mainly seen in your young and newly diagnosed patients compared to HHNS. This is going to be seen in your mainly your older adults who are presenting with a severe infection. Main problems include hyperglycemia, you're going to see that, ketosis, and acidosis, where the blood pH will be 7.5 or less and the bicarb will be less than 15. However, in HHNS, 
you are just going to have that extreme hyperglycemia and dehydration, severe dehydration due to that hyperosmolarity, that concentrated glucose in the blood. Treatments are the same for these, um, which will include IV fluids, insulin, electrolyte emplacement, most um, more likely the potassium replacement. However, with HHNS, one of the best treatments is just getting them rehydrated because those cells are literally shriveled up, gone, way, not gone, but they're wasted, and rehydrating them is actually going to move um, your electrolytes back. It's going to decrease that blood sugar just as well as the insulin. So IV fluids is super important in our patients with HHNS. DKA, one of the typical signs, because both, both of these conditions, you're going to have polyuria, you're going to have polydipsia. But the big differences in signs and symptoms is that these patients in DKA can have the cosmal breathing, and this is due to the metabolic acidosis where the body is trying to blow off that extra acid, the carbon dioxide, to try to compensate for these acidotic conditions. So it's rapid, deep breathing and they will have the acetone breath and abdominal pain, and this is due to the ketones breaking down. However, you remember in HHNS, you don't have the ketosis or acidosis, so you won't have cosmal breathing or the fruity breath, but you're more likely to see mental status changes in these patients due to that severe dehydration that they're experiencing. So that is the difference between DKA and HHNS. Now go take that quiz on my website, registerednursrn.com and see how well you grasp this material. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.